Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be checking out a new flight controller from Beta FPV that's designed for 1S Tiny Whoops. This is the Beta FPV Air G4 5 in 1. It includes a Blue J ESC running 96 kilohertz, a G4 flight controller, a 400 milliwatt VTX, and a 2.4 gigahertz ELRS receiver all on one board for a complete integrated solution for Tiny Whoops. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through all of the specs and features of this new flight controller on the bench. We're gonna be looking at the performance of the VTX. Beta FPV say they've improved the consistency of output power on the 25 milliwatt setting from the Air G4 4-in-1. So we're gonna see if that holds true. And I'm gonna be replacing the flight controller in my Beta FPV Air 65, the 4-in-1, with this 5-in-1 board and seeing what weight savings we can get. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If you want to pick up the Beta FPV Air G4, either the 4-in-1 or the 5-in-1, for your next Tiny Whoop build, then there are links to where you can get it down in the video description. And those links do help support the channel, and they don't cost you anything. So please, if you possibly can, do try and use those links. So here we have the two versions of the Beta FPV Air G4 on the bench, the 4-in-1 on the left and the 5-in-1 with the ELRS receiver on the right. Starting on the top of the board, we've got um, a UART1 breakout, so TX and RX for UART1 on both boards. And next to that is the 16 megabyte black box storage chip. So this gives you loads of space to store the logs for your flights and make sure that you're able to tune your tiny whoop to perfection. It's really important, I think, to get a flight controller with logging these days so that you can debug any issues and also get the quad really nicely tuned. Coming down, we've got the VTX section here with the UFL output. So this is for the integrated 400 milliwatt analog VTX that's on both of these boards. And I've just got it connected to a whip style antenna, but you could also use something even lighter weight if you wanted to. This little white plug here is the camera connector for both boards. Although we do also have pads for direct soldering a camera if you want to, but if you happen to be using a Beta FPV camera with this plug, you can just plug it in. On the four in one, next to the camera, we've got the breakout pads for UART3. So we've got power ground TX and RX for UART3. And that's for soldering on your external receiver. So for example, this 2.4 gigahertz ELRS receiver, you could solder that on there. Obviously those pads don't exist on the five in one because it's internally connected. So UART3 is internally connected to the ELRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver. So you have a um, serial based ELRS receiver on this board. And that's what you want because a serial based receiver allows you to update the ELRS firmware separate to updating your Betaflight firmware. And therefore you can always stay on the latest version. A spy based receiver, which is what some uh, boards have used before, means that the code for ELRS is actually inside Betaflight. And so you can't update one without the other. That can make it a bit tricky to stay on the latest version. If we flip both the boards over, you can see that we've got the um, large pads here for direct soldering the motors. Neither of these flight controllers come with plugs for the motors, and that's a good thing because tiny whoop motors perform a lot better if they're direct soldered. Plugs just have too much resistance. So you've got some nice big pads to direct solder the motors. And these are five amp rated ESCs, and they're all running Blue J with 96 kilohertz PWM, which is absolutely what you want to get the best possible performance. We've got the G4 processor. Now the G4 processor on this board is almost exactly the same speed as an F405. So it's capable of running a 4K PID loop with all the bells and whistles, no problem. So that's gonna be um, a lot faster than for example, the F411 that uh, would have been on boards previously, which is quite a bit slower. So the G4 processor is a really nice touch. And they've also included a plug here for an external USB-C breakout board. So that's how you're gonna connect the flight controller to your computer using this little breakout board um, and a USB-C cable. The pads here are breaking out UART4. So um, what we've got is UART1 is broken out. UART2 on both of these boards is internally connected to the VTX. UART3 is broken out on the four in one to connect to your receiver and not broken out on the five in one because it's internally connected to the included ELRS receiver. And then UART4 is available on both boards on these pads here. Both the four in one and five in one Air G4 come with some gummies and screws, a USB-C to JST 1.0 connector, so you can connect to the flight controller, a 
BT 2.0 power cable and a little lightweight whip style antenna for the VTX. So let's get some weights for the boards now and this is including the BT 2.0 power connector. So the 4-in-1 comes in at 4.12 grams and the 5-in-1 comes in at 4.64 grams. If we would compare that to the 4-in-1 plus a separate ELRS receiver, you can see that we do get about ooh, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 of a gram saving by using the 5-in-1 versus the 4-in-1 with a separate receiver. But of course, the board weights don't tell the entire story. For the fairest comparison, let's compare the weight of this 65mm tiny whoop with the Air G4 4-in-1 to the same whoop with the Air G4 5-in-1 and see if we can save any weight moving from a separate to an integrated ELRS receiver. So let's start by getting the weight of my Beta FPV Air 65 with the 4-in-1 flight controller. And that comes in at 17.23 grams. Now let's swap from the 4-in-1 to the 5-in-1 flight controller. There, much neater. And now the weight with the 5-in-1. And that's coming in at 17.1 grams. Now let's talk about VTX output power. And one of the things I noticed that was slightly strange with the Beta FPV Air 65 bind and fly that I tested with the 4-in-1 flight controller was that the VTX output power on 25 milliwatts was a little bit high, particularly in the lower channels like race band one, race band two. Beta FPV contacted me after I made that video and said that they were also able to replicate that high power output and that they had fixed it in the five in one. So let's see if they're right. So here are the VTX power output test results for the Air G4 five in one. And a huge congratulations to Beta FPV here. The work they have done on tuning the output power, particularly on 25 milliwatts, has really paid off. And from race one to race eight, you're getting pretty much spot on 25 milliwatts at that 25 milliwatt setting. And this is fantastic for racing because it's gonna make sure that you don't blow other pilots out of the sky, but also you are at the maximum output power that you're allowed, so you're getting the clearest video that you can. Moving up to the 100 milliwatt setting, we're getting about 120 milliwatts of output power and very consistent across all the channels. And we move up to 200 milliwatts, it's about 250 milliwatts of output power, again, very consistent, and between 400 and 450 milliwatts on the 400 milliwatt setting. This is a really good result for a VTX like this, and it really gives you a lot of confidence that Beta FPV have been able to dial in the power output of this VTX for the 5-in-1 Air G4. When I reviewed the original Air G4 4-in-1 as part of my Air 65 bind and fly review, I had only two criticisms that I could level at it. The first was that it didn't have an integrated Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver. And the second was that the VTX output power was a bit inconsistent, especially on the 25 milliwatt setting. With the Air G4 5-in-1, Beta FPV have conclusively addressed those two criticisms. We now have the integrated Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver on a UART so that you can update the firmware separately from Betaflight and always stay on the latest version of Express LRS. And the VTX output power is completely sorted. It's now phenomenally consistent on all of the power settings, but especially on 25 milliwatts. So it's perfect for racing. So now we have to talk about pricing. The Air G4 4-in-1 was priced at $45. And we would expect the 5-in-1 with the integrated ELRS receiver to cost a bit more. And it does, but only $5 more. You can pick up the Air G4 5-in-1 for 50 bucks. And at that price, with these features and the performance that I've measured, I mean, for me, it's a slam dunk. And I can't help but give it my strongest possible recommendation. I cannot find anything wrong with it now. So if you wanna try the Air G4 5-in-1 for yourself, there are links to where you can pick it up down in the video description. And if you click through on those links, you will be helping to support the channel and it won't cost you anything. So please, if you do wanna try the Air G4 5-in-1 or the 4-in-1 because you wanna use your own receiver, please do use those links if you possibly can and help support the channel. That's all I have for you for today. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, I wish you all happy flying.